Performing an oil change on most cars is very simple. For example, today we're going to change the oil in a 2003 Volkswagen Jetta. It has a two-liter four-cylinder motor. It's normally aspirated, but you'll find that this procedure is the same for all of the Volkswagens that have four-cylinder motors. Now, you'll notice that the engine is mounted transversely, which means that it's 90 degrees from what you would normally see in the BMW or, or Mercedes or most Audis. Here's a tip. If the car's been sitting cold, let it warm up a little bit so that the oil drains more freely. On the other hand, if you're hot off the street, let it cool down a little bit so you don't burn yourself. When you jack up any car to get access to the underside, be sure to follow all the safety precautions in your owner's manual. Here's a tip if you're using a floor jack. Many cars, including Volkswagen and Audi, have a pinch weld that runs the length of the underside of the chassis just under the rocker panel. Unfortunately, that's where you have to jack up the car. Whatever you do, you don't want to damage that pinch weld, but you can easily improvise. You can use a piece of wood and cut a groove and uh, create a nice little straddle for yourself. Here's an example of a pinch weld. You can see that it's uh, very narrow and there's not like a big bulky piece here to use your jack on. So make sure that you use the appropriate piece, whether it's wood or plastic, that straddles this so you can properly jack it up without ruining it. There's a plastic shield, uh, an engine shield, underneath the front of the car that has to be removed in order to get access to the oil filter. Just takes a few uh, screws or torque screws to remove. It's very easy. Make sure you put a drain pan underneath the car so you can catch the oil uh, as you drain it. And then simply attach your ratchet to the drain plug and uh, take it out and let the oil drain. Still underneath the car, uh, we want to get access from the bottom to remove the oil filter. And this will get a little bit messy, and so it'll be helpful to make sure that you've moved the oil pan to catch any oil that comes out while you're removing the filter. Before you put the new filter on, take some of the new oil and spread it around the oil seal ring and you'll get a better seal that way. When you install the new filter, uh, it's very easy. Just twist it on. And then when you get to the point where it seats, then you simply turn it a firm turn by hand. There's no tool required to crank it down any more than that. After you've installed the new oil filter, then it's time to reinstall the drain plug. And you want to make sure that you put a new crush ring in there. It's that copper ring that uh, should come with your kit. But uh, reinstall the drain plug. And uh, the manual doesn't give an actual torque specification, so just make sure that you sufficiently uh, tighten it by hand with the wrench firmly, but make sure that you don't over-tighten. After reinstalling the drain plug, then you can uh, put the under tray back in, the plastic piece on the uh, front of the bottom side of the car. And then go ahead and uh, pour in your oil. Using a funnel will help prevent making a big mess. Be sure to check with your owner's manual to pour in the proper amount of oil. You can always add more, but if you've overfilled, it's a real pain to correct that. While you're here, it makes a lot of sense to check all the different fluids on your car. Uh, check for leaks, check for belts that may be cracked. Just look around the engine bay for anything that doesn't seem right. Uh, it's a great opportunity to do a regular check. You might also want to check your air filter, things of that nature that are real easy to check. After you've poured, poured in the oil, start up the engine. Make sure that you check for any leaks on the underside, uh, check for any other leaks that might be happening, and uh, as the motor runs for a couple of minutes, it'll fill up that oil filter, and then you'll be able to properly check the level. Turn the motor off and uh, check the dipstick for the proper level.
wipe the dipstick off after you've pulled it out the first time and then put it back in firmly, pull it out and look at the level to make sure it is where it needs to be. Uh, if it's a little bit light then add some. If you've overfilled it you'll have to correct that. Well as you can see that oil change was pretty easy. If you're brand new to DIY automotive projects you know you can get a lot done with a few simple tools and a little bit of know-how. One thing that will help you out with that is a Haynes manual. This one happens to be for a Beetle, but a Haynes manual will have all kinds of information, step-by-step -step instructions, photographs, torque specifications, things you'll need to know to work on your car. Well, whether you do it yourself to have fun or save money or both, AutoWorks of America has the parts you need to get the job done.